Welcome to today's meeting of the GLA Oversight Committee. Can I welcome the members who are here at Union Street and we're still waiting for one more member to make us core it. And also those who are joining us remotely and officers in the public who are remote and also joining us here at Union Street. Can I remind everyone please to turn their phones off or put them on silence and make sure devices are away from the microphones. Um, can I ask um, Davina, our clerk, to confirm any apologies for absence and any members who are attending virtually? Thank you, Chair. We haven't received any apologies for absence for today's meeting. However, Assembly Members Ahmad, Assembly Member Desai, Assembly Member McCartney, Assembly Member Hall and Assembly Member Dr Sohota are joining this meeting today remotely. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Can we note the list of officers held by Assembly members and do any members have any other disclosable pecuniary interests in any items on the agenda today? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Item three. I guess if we go through these and then just conf confirm it when Assembly Member Prince is here when we're core it, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, so we can't do the okay, we can't do the minutes until... He's here. We can do item four. Yep. We can do item four, noting the completed ongoing and closed actions arising from previous meetings. Is that noted, members? And the action taken under delegated authority, I'm told I can do that as well. Can we note the recent action taken by myself as chair under delegated authority in consultation with the deputy chairman, party group lead members and the chair of the election review working group, namely to agree the election review working group's report? Noted. Thank you. Right, we can, let's move on to our items on the agenda and then when Assembly Member Prince is here, we can confirm the minutes and any uh, other things from the particular items we've got today. So let's move to item six, which is the Vulnerable Adult Safeguarding Policy. Um, our Chief Officer Mary Hartley is joining us remotely and also Cynthia Ajay, the HR Policy Advisor. Um, do either of you want to say just a brief few words about the report? Members have read it and then we'll take questions. I, I think, Chair, we'll just take questions, I think, which, which um, Cynthia will field, if that's OK with you. Lovely. OK, thank you. Um, so, members, Assembly Member Fortune. Thank you very much, Chair. Just a, a question about how we embed the culture into the organisation. Uh, there's, a, there's a day rate mentioned of about £1,500 for training. Are we going to do any train the trainer? Uh, are we going to um, enable people within the organisation to be able to um, roll this out in the future? Cynthia. Yes, um, it's the simple answer. Um, um, once the policy is approved, we are intending on a doing the basic um, principles of safeguarding um, to all staff. Um, and we will do that through e-learning type training um, and then we will do accreditation for the specific areas of the business where they do come in direct contact with vulnerable adults um, and we will follow up with the with the training to ensure that each area commits um, to these trainings that we will be monitoring um, uh, and um, continuously um, just to ensure that we we meet all our obligations Okay. Um, uh, Assembly Member Duval. No. Press. Press Can you there. hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, it, the report talks about um, uh, that there were various risks, safeguarding risks were identified as part of a 220 stroke 21 audit plan. Can you provide some explanation to what those risks were? And can you just paint me some pictures around that um, in terms of, of what, what's been going on? Um, and then tell us what steps managers at the, at the assembly, assembly at the GLA have been undertaking to minimise the risks then? Because it seems to have been an awful gap a large gap between identifying the problem and then to where we are today. So can you take me through that? <clears throat> um, so the audit is, was a, a part of a, our internal audit, 2021-22 audit, 
which looked at our safeguarding um, responsibilities across the whole organization, included the, our current uh, digital safeguarding and children and young people um, safe, uh, safeguard, safeguarding. And the gap that was identified was that we, we, we meet all our obligation in those three areas. However, that there was a um, gap in the vulnerable um, safeguarding adult. Now we, we don't, as a business, we don't come directly in contact so much with vulnerable adult, but there are instances where we do. And these are the gaps that was identified in the audit. And through, through that, we, we are now, by introducing this policy, we're hoping to plug that gap that was identified um, um, in meeting our obligation in that sense. Um, the, the, the audit is a continuation audit that we do annually. So it was part, it's part of the wider process in identifying um, um, any gaps that may, may appear in terms of our policy um, and guidances. So, question. so there were no specific issues identified during the review. It was just the policy gaps rather than practical issues that arose in the day-to-day -day operations of the organisation. <clears throat> Sorry, Cynthia, I was going to say to, to Assembly Member Trevor, I think that's a fair summary. Okay, and um, when will the GLA introduce these safeguarding leads then? We, once the policy is approved, we have all the mechanism in place at the moment. Um, we will introduce, we will then, um, we have the providers um, to come in to, to train um, those leads. Um, so once the policy is approved, this is where we'll start the process. Okay. Mm. Thank you. And did Assemblyman McCartney, did I see your hand? No, yes. Well, you have, yes. Thank you. Um, can I ask, how are you going to make sure that the training's making a difference? You know, are you, are you going to be monitoring, for example, the um, percentage of staff that undertake the e-learning? Is it going to be whether referrals or concerns are raised with yourself? What mechanisms have you got in place to monitor the effectiveness of this? What, what we are doing is that we, we are going to make it, um, um, each area of the business will be responsible um, for monitoring. The moment that the, the, the training will sit with HR, but each area will be responsible for mon monitoring the uptake of the, the, the policies. So we, I mean, of the um, training and all of the e-learning that will come along with it. So, and we we're monitoring those two regular updating regular contact with um, each area of the business. This is what this is what we've built into our current um, training modules at the moment. Okay, and is the GLA equipped to deal with referrals or concerns? We, we are working on that at the moment. That's all part of the uh, putting this policy in place and putting all the mechanisms in place to be able to enable us to do that. Okay, thank you. And then Mary, um, given that this is an e-learning um, um, program. Um, can assembly members have access to it as well? I, I don't see why not. Thank you. Okay, lovely. There are no other comments. Um, okay, um, we will, should we pause, I don't think we'll just pause our official response to that and wait for assembly member prints. And I'm told by if Assembly Member Prince isn't here by 10.15, we'll have to go into an informal meeting until he arrives and then we can carry on formally. Um, so uh, I've got a, about two more minutes on that. I don't know if we've got any update on where Assembly Member Prince is, whether Peter's just going to message him. OK, so let's pause. I don't think we've got any more questions on that. So let's move on to our next report. So if I could ask um, Joanna Davidson to come up to the table. And this is the item seven, proposals for the establishment of GLA group public health function. Um, obviously this came to our last committee as well. Um, is there anything you need to add on this, Joanna? Uh, no, happy to take questions, Chair. Members, do we have any questions? Assembly Member Russell. 
Thank you, uh, Chair. Yes, um, I mean, we've already discussed this report and um, uh, welcomed it, um, uh, the, the overall whole proposal. I've just got a couple of um, kind of detailed questions. Um, so at point 411 in the report, it talks about how the new public health function and the uh, GLA Group Director of Public Health would be responsible for leadership, horizon scanning and strategic direction, working closely with the proposed GLA Group Public Health Forum to set priorities and direct resources. And I just wondered how the um, health inequality strategy sits within that. Is that assumed just to be a sort of overarching policy document that relates to it? Um, so that's my first question, so I'll let you go with that, and then I've got one more. Thank you. Um, obviously, the, the health inequality strategy is one of the uh, mayor's statutory strategies, so that will sit above, in many senses, um, guiding um, the work of both the health team that are remaining in communities and skills um, separately alongside um, education and young Londoners. Um, with the GLA group um, uh, board, sorry, function, um, clearly the his will sit there, but there's also a wider role in terms of general public health leadership that will be across the group. Um, the plan will be for the forum to actually um, have a, a role in helping to develop the business plan and the work that's um, the priorities for the team. So what we want to make sure we're doing is not duplicating action that's happening in different places, but to actually really try and um, introduce aspects that aren't dealt with properly at the moment. So there is a leadership role internally across the group. There's also a leadership role, I think, in many senses externally, because the plan is for the new group director um, to be the deputy statutory advisor. And obviously, that gives the role both internally to the mayor and assembly, but also externally across London, um, mm -hmm. working very closely with um, directors of public health in the boroughs. So there's a sort of link out there. We're also hoping to see um, uh, closer connections developing um, in terms of the education side. We already bring on a lot of um, new public health registrars, have placements in the team. We want to see that develop. So I think there's a lot of potential there on the research side to actually, for our small team, to actually be pump priming stuff that's happening externally. Um, and if I could just um, say a great big thank you to Katie Ferguson, who has um, been doing a lot of the work to support this in that very capacity. So I think we're, we're doing a lot with this team to actually help improve and strengthen public health right across London, um, as well as just the work we're doing internally. Thank you. Is, is that that's everything on? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and my other question is um, about the kind of Chinese walls between the mayor's team and the assembly. So um, it says um, that you know they'd act as an advisor to the London Assembly and individual assembly members. And then uh, 4.13, um, the deputy statutory ad health advisor fulfills the statutory duties of the statutory health advisors provided in section 309A of the GLA Act 1999 to give independent public health advice to the mayor, the assembly and the GLA group. Um, just to be clear, how do those Chinese walls work? Because you know our role here on the assembly is to scrutinise the work of the mayor. So I just wonder how they're going to manage uh, that joint uh, kind of relationship. Sure. Uh, in the same way as it happens at the moment, because currently Vicky um, Hobart, who is the Head of Health, is the Deputy Statutory Advisor. So she has that remit in the same way as Kevin Fenton does as the um, Regional Director for Public Health and the Mayor and Assembly Advisor. So um, they're both employees of um, the Office for Health, um, Inequalities and Disparities, OHID, on, um, and Vicky's on a sort of permanent secondment arrangement to us. So in terms of their managerial responsibility, the plan will be that there's a, a two-way line as there is currently, but we already have that sense of independence in the same way in many senses that in a borough, the Director of Public Health, although they're part of a management team, have that independence um, and you know, if they wanted to put something forward, it's, it's important that they're not fettered by any sort of political um, 
sense of direction. So that, that applies at the moment. Um, I think the one of the requirements of the group director is that they should be um, professionally registered as a public health consultant. So again, you've got a lot of safeguards there in terms of what's expected through that registration. But I think hopefully you'll feel that that's worked, worked well so far. Um, I certainly haven't seen any sense of there being a problem. Um, clearly, if there was something that came up, we would expect to try and tackle that. Um, you know, via Kevin, Kevin um, in his role as regional director, but it hasn't been a problem so far. So um, part of partly what we're doing as well is um, because the arrangement will continue on as a common, we're developing a protocol that would be um, would govern how the arrangements sort of work um, between the GLA and um, OHID in relation to that particular member of staff. And the importance of professionalism and keeping that independence is actually, you know, riven through that. It's a bit like a, a stick of rock. Thank you. It, um, and absolutely, there's been no problems in terms of blurring of those lines um, hitherto. But it's, it's good, you know, when we're sort of agreeing this whole process, it's good just to um, check exactly um, how it's all working. Absolutely. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, we are now in an informal meeting and I have got to read something out. It turns out we can't go back to being a formal meeting even if Keith does arrive. So this meeting will now continue to take place informally as an in, in accordance with Standing Order 2.4F. Um, quorum for this meeting has not been reached, so we will not take formal decisions or agree the minutes of the 12th of January 2022 meeting, which were included the, in the agenda. Instead, the meetings will be deferred to the next formal meeting of this committee. For transparency, we will still declare interests and be able to note items, but the rest of the business can be dealt with under delegated authority following the meeting. So we can have a discussion if there are any concerns people have got, and then I will have to fill out and do the delegated decision paperwork after the meeting so that we can conclude our business so we did I mean I, I understand it's very difficult coming in today but we did a call round yesterday we were expecting some other members who have not come in today so um, we do need to make sure groups that um, if members say they're coming in they do do come in and I appreciate it's very difficult when there are strikes on so are there any other comments on the health paper Mm, no, I'm not seeing any, so I think you've heard the points there that we'll respond. Item 8 next. Thank you very much, Joanna. Item 8, which is changes to the GLA building safety team. We've got Ricardo here, as if by magic, at the end of the room, and Mary online. Is there anything you want to mention about this paper, Ricardo? Uh, no, happy to take questions, Chair. Thank you. Members, do we have any questions on Ricardo's paper? Just to be clear, this is government have asked you to carry out more work and that's why you're recruiting and it's all funded by government. Yes, 100% of the costs uh, will be met by government, yeah. Lovely. I'm Assembly Member Fortune. I, I was just going to ask for absolute clarity on those costs, including on-cost pensions, etc. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so no other comments on this report? You've got away lightly, Ricardo. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. So we will respond to that accordingly. Item nine is our GLA Oversight Committee work programme. Can we note that? So our next meeting will be looking at the move to the new City Hall and also the elections review. Um, date of the next meeting. It is going to be on the 23rd of March at two o'clock. I'm not clear yet whether we'll be here or in the new City Hall, but that will be confirmed. So given that, that concludes our meeting members and I will be doing various forms after the meeting to formally um, agree our responses to those reports. So thank you all very much for coming in. There's no other urgent business. So I conclude the meeting. Thank you very much.